Now, Aaron was um, saying a little bit about how his station has changed and um, that everybody is now a general assignment reporter for the most part. I want to know how it looks at um, Aaron's and Melissa's station. Aaron, can you talk a little bit about what has changed since the economy has taken? Uh, well, I mean, we went through cutbacks in January. Uh, uh, Clear Channel nationwide cut 1,300 people, and uh, newsrooms all across the country uh, were affected. Uh, KFI, thankfully, was not because we're actually now doing news for other markets, and that's that's the um, that's the status of the industry right now is is what we describe as hub and spoke, where you have the hub of KFI now doing news in in other markets. In Miami, we did the same thing. We did we did news for uh, everybody uh, for lots of different stations in in Florida, and and it's that's just the. The, the state of the industry right now is is you're trying to get as much as you can from as little as possible. And same with us, cutbacks across the board. I mean, our station was affected greatly. And, uh, you know, you always hear about another round of layoffs coming, but it's a reminder that, um, you know, being in this industry, it's, it's difficult to get there. It's difficult to get to this level. And, you know, you appreciate it because you see veterans let go, unfortunately. Um, for whatever reason it is, their contract was up, cutbacks, uh, they make too much. I mean, but th everyone has been affected, and you just try to go on and make sure that the product is not affected. And it's not, but you just can't cover what you would like to cover. Say there are 15 things across the region you want to show up to, you can't because you don't have the staff to do it. You have to pick and choose what's more important. Nobody one man bans it like Adam. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that, that, you're as general assignment and as uh, and as one man band as, as it gets and right you'll now. You'll be rewarded for that. Yeah. Hopefully, mm -hmm. one day. Yeah. Yeah. They, it, from from at least the smaller station perspective, our station went through a huge cutback. We got rid of all of our video editors and all of our production assistants uh, on the weekends. For the weekends that I anchor. I show up at 10, 11 in the morning. I produce the entire show, write the entire show, edit all the video, get up and anchor the 6 p.m. news, do the exact same thing for the 10 and 11 o'clock news, and do weather. And it didn't used to be that way. Even when I got to the station, it wasn't like that. At our stations, yeah. we have a person for each of those positions yeah. you yeah. described. Yeah, it, it, and that was, the, at least that was within the past year because it wasn't like that even when I came out of CSUN at that point. That's just the way, it, it's it's sad. But you learn a lot and you your skill set becomes also very valuable as you start to move on at that point. I started the same way. I was doing four different things at once and expect to do that. <laughs> yeah, and, and the first job I got was uh, I, w I would love to have been a reporter right off the bat, but he said, uh, I really have only an editor position right now. Uh, are you okay with it? And I said, well, it's a job, right? And and it is. So I, you just have to do a little bit of everything or a, a lot of everything. <laughs> yeah. One day, one day. <laughs> Did you have another question, Catherine? Yeah, finally, I'd, I'd like to know if we as graduating seniors, do we still have a shot at a real full-time job or are we going to have to expect to work as freelancers or jump around here and there? No, absolutely you do. Uh, I wasn't introduced into the freelance market until my job in Las Vegas, and that was just a way to get me there. A lot of times, um, people, they don't want to pay to move you across the country. Uh, they're not sure your tape they don't know if you are what you know shows on your tape so they don't want to fully invest in you so the freelance comes in not only to save money and benefits that you don't get um, but it's also to see if you are what they want you know it's it's a tester um, and it always pays off every freelance position in Vegas I was hired six months later here I was hired as a contracted employee six months later in an industry that uh, thrives on freelance you you would be surprised how many legendary veteran anchors and reporters are freelance you know so this industry is known for that but throughout the first seven years of my career it was a contracted position. The job that you're likely to get out of college will be contracted. The smaller markets are really big on that. Yeah, yeah free, freelance, uh, I mean, your original question was, uh, do you have to worry about not being able to get a job? It's not just broadcast industry. Every, everybody, the college degree 
uh, unfortunately does not go as, as, as far as it used to, but that's across the board. It doesn't matter if you're, it's a business degree or a liberal studies degree. Everybody has to worry about getting a, getting a job out of college. But uh, from our standpoint, it was tough from the, from the beginning. It's always, it's always going to be tough to get into this industry. So you just, just keep at it. Just keep, like the, the original, uh, or the first, the first question was, uh, how am I going to get a job out of college? And it's just persistence. It, it's, it, it doesn't matter if the job market's great. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's tough. It's always going to be, it's going to come down to persistence. I agree with that wholeheartedly. You, I think, a lot of jobs too in smaller markets. From what I, I, I've seen lately, a lot of a lot of smaller markets are, are hiring. Especially if you're getting going now, with the two-year contracts in the smaller markets, those college kids that just came out of college, they're looking to go somewhere else if they can. There's always that movement, and just like Aaron said, I think if you are persistent, that job is there and you will get it. You just have to keep going for it and never sell yourself short because the jobs are there and just tell yourself it's your job, you're going to get it and it will come the longer that you push for it. Well, even if it is freelance, mm -hmm. you know, that's a foot in the door. It's an opportunity it's more, to prove yourself. It's more video for your reel. Yeah. Right. You want to be a reporter out the door? Maybe the producer job is there. The producer job, take it. Work your way to the, there. It, just what they're saying, it gets your foot in the door. Well, thank you, Catherine. So um, now it's my turn to ask a couple questions. And my first question is directed towards you, Melissa. Um, in this industry, it's been said to be mostly dominated by men. Um, do you ever face discrimination as a woman in the broadcasting industry? Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. That's tough. Um, it's funny because at the Duopoly, women journalists, the broadcasters are mostly all women. We dominate. Uh, the duopoly it's interesting there but yes I have um, it's not only from gender but age as well uh, even in this market I, I've showed up to interview politicians won't say who um, and they have made off-the-cuff comments that were you know I felt disrespectful or demeaning whether it be um, you know trying to put me in my place to make a little kitty comment or uh, you know any, or overly complimentary on how I'm dressed that day, anything to kind of throw me off my game. Um, who knows if it's just you know innate in their character or if it was intentional to throw me off because it was a topic that they're not pleased with uh, discussing with me. But you will face that. And there were a, a few horror stories um, with me and news directors uh, in the past with smaller markets and I had uh, constant um, you know issues with uh, whenever I stood up for myself or I you know um, spoke free freely about my opinion or I disagreed or I argued about how I think a story should be told or what story we should be covering yeah, uh, which I feel I have every right to do so it you know you're viewed in a certain way you're viewed as having you know, an attitude problem or insubordinate, but you just have to rise above that, always stay classy, handle, handle yourself in a professional way, communicate in a really classy, professional way, and you will rise above. There's, you are going to encounter that. I don't know many women who haven't. Um, mine have been a little bit nastier than I anticipated, fresh out of college, very naive. But I'm telling you this because uh, when someone tries to knock you down, uh, you won't let that happen because you're stronger than that. You have to be tough to be in this industry. And it goes back to being mentally and emotionally strong. Mm -hmm. And that will help you because it will happen at, at one point. It will, you know, and you just, you take it for what it is. You know what you are and what your goals are and what your intentions are and you just, you let it slide, you know.